Greetings to all. This is Bashar. Good morning, Bashar. Thank you so much for joining us. It is my pleasure. I just would like to remind people that the hybridization programs that you all speak about are coming to a new phase. There are those that are coming beforehand to check out the earth, to let us all know, and to let the galaxy know if you are ready for the hybrid children and the hybrid races to come to your planet. Now, I've spoke about this already, and I will speak about it again when I travel. But let me tell you now what I know and what I can tell you at this time, because it is an interesting time on your planet. Yes, there will be changes, and you know that I have spoken very clearly about change. I cannot tell you the future. That is not who, who I am. I cannot do that. No one can do that for you. Things have not been completely worked out. Many of these things are going to happen, and we know that many of these thought processes are already in the, on route to you. So, but the hybridization program is important for many reasons. It will be helping the universe, the galaxy, and your planet in particular because you are that of the future. But let me tell you, there are those that are coming that are checking out the planet for first contact, for hybridization processes, for those that need to understand, understand what hybridization is and if they can live among humans. There will be much more information about this coming, but speaking through this individual, that's all I can do for now. Is there some questions for me before I move forward? Yes. Yes. My name's Raymond. Raymond. I've been wondering, why have people been not sleeping so good lately? Oh. That's an easy answer. It's the fourth dimensional energy anomaly that you talk about. I don't speak of it because our people do not want us to really speak about it too much. We are aware of it. It is just something that is natural. You must go through it. Why make a big deal about it? But it does cause you to restless until you get used to it, until you find out that it is part of who you are in many senses and when it's done it will be done but you will have a residue effect it will have awakened you to some effect to some experience and to i'm not sure i'm saying it correctly but it will have awakened you to a new heightened level of fourth dimension all right that is all very well other questions Hi, yes, Bashar, I have a quick question regarding the hybridization programs and um, the uh, idea of first contact as we yes. understand it to be. Um, is it still, are, is the likelihood still there that it will probably be the yeah, yell that will be coming down for first contact worldwide initially are there because i have heard of a lot of other beings trying yes to this is what's happening it was originally discussed that the yu yu should be first because of certain features that they have they look more human they're less scary blah 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 but there are other species that have decided that they are not prepared enough to, uh, um, the the Yu-Gi-Oh are not prepared enough to come first. But yes, they should in many respects because of who they are and how close they are in human uh, DNA, etc. However, other species would like to take control of this 
and bring their own kind of first contact to the earth and feel that it might be a greater success than what they feel that the you will have planned. This is a matter of opinion. And of course, opinions run vastly different among different species, as you know, because they all have their own point of view, point of view, how the world is going to react to first contact. Now, your first contact for your planet will be extraordinary because why because your governments already know about alien existence and how many there are around in this the solar system they see that they are that many of them have left the area for the momentarily momentarily but there are still many species that are still around your planet and they they're worried that there may be an attack however they also know that there are friendly ones and they speak to certain aspects of the, the galaxy and of the alliances frequently. So therefore, they know that these particular aliens will not attack, but they are not familiar with them all. So, I'm getting off track. But yes, first contact will be with you yell at this point it is still set that they should be first it is still set closest to humans as anyone can be but there are others that are in in disagreement with how they will do it however there are seven or eight or nine different scenarios that have been presented to different councils, different alliances for first contact. Still, at this point, the Yugil are still first. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, the it seems like the humans. Um, how do I word this? <laughs> we might have a little bit of a say, but it's really not up to us because we're just kind of the... But uh, you do. You understand? You do have a say because we will not come and interrupt a culture without the government's permission. Now, I, as who I am and what species that I bring forth, part of your first contact but we will assert that we are behind it we confirm that we agree that there will be a time that it is necessary but that time is not yet yes okay that makes sense um, I, what, what I was meaning to say is it's like we're able to maybe ask for certain races, but ultimately it, it also depends on what's compatible and everything. So I didn't mean to say that it's not up to us because obviously you guys can't come here. Well, yes, but it's up to us as our off-world people to present ourselves in a way that is perfectly presentable to humans in a non-frightening way, if possible. Yeah. If possible. There will always be those that will be frightened. There will always be those that will be skeptical. There will always be those that will not understand. It is with every culture. Every culture has this group of people that will not understand and will be frightened and will push away the understanding. But yet, the whole of the cultures on the planet must be in alignment for us to come. Yes, certainly. Okay. Um, 
very interesting. So in regards to the hybridization program, because uh, we were just talking about this, and then Krellick, you can ask next. Uh, Michelle had a quick question. She said, are the Yayel part of human colony hybridization program that they try to keep secret? And how many other species of hybrids are being hidden from us and why? That is many questions altogether. Let me say this. Yuyil is part of human colony. Yes, they have, they are part of that alliance. Secrets. Every species has their own secrets. But that's not necessarily against you. Your own secrets against each other. You have secrets, no one knows. Why do you keep secrets? Not necessarily to harm anyone. And that's true of species as well. We all have our secrets. We cannot, we cannot divulge all our information to you because it will be misused. So of course, there must be secrets from you. You understand? So, that does not mean we are evil or we are making plans against you. We just have our own personalities, our own understandings of who you are, and there are some things we just can't tell you. Understandable. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have a question from Krellick. Hello. Krellick. Continue. Um, I wanted to ask about the fall of 2016, if, if the fourth dimensional energies is what you were talking about when you said everything will change in the fall of 2016. No. No, no I'm talking of the things. You will see there are other things that are coming that will change the perception of people on this land, in other lands, because what happens on this land changes the perception. The whole earth will be affected by what I am saying and I'm talking about. Just as the fourth dimensional energy has had some effect on everything, these situations these things will have effect on the world. Uh, thank you for that. You are welcome. Thank you. We have a question from Sheer. Sheer. Hello, Michelle. Greetings. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. It's been a long time since we spoke. Yes. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you, you once said in one of your predictions that it might be possible for have um, peace in the Middle East by 2020. Is that still on the table, as you say? Yes. So, can you tell me when are we going to see major changes in Israel? There are already major changes on their way in Israel and around the world. But in Israel, it will happen within, I cannot tell you how many of your Earth years, but I can tell you that it is already coming. It is already on its way. It is already uh, beginning. So do not worry about that. As time moves forward, you will see what I mean. You will know that the predictions are there for their own moment in time, so to speak. They are what they are. I see. When uh, when Liav child you here in Israel, do you know who is the abyss? Obviously. Yes. Do you so... want me to speak about that? Mm hmm? What do you want me to say about that? Ah, when I spoke with him a year and a half ago, 
Yeah, you I told us about, uh, we asked you about the election, and you said the election was rigged, and they're going to discover it in a year and a half. And it's yeah. actually this month. So is that one of the major changes? No. There has been many rigged elections. Many, many throughout the history of your planet and other planets. When, if there is planets with elections, so to speak, in that way. But that is not what I am talking about. With great changes coming to the Earth. That is not what I was speaking of, no. Okay, thank you. And is there anything do you, do you want me to say to Liav? Is there anything what? I did not hear that. To Liav, the guy that chants you here in Israel. Is there something ah. you want to tell him? No, we are friends already. He knows all the things that he know, needs to know. And I can just say, hello. That is it. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question. Any more questions or should I go? Well, we love having you here, Bashar. If you can stick around, we do have a few more questions for you. Mm, I can. Wonderful. Okay. Um, we have a question next from Liney. Um, she had just quickly asked, she wanted to know how close your ship was to our planet. It is usually, usually over the area called Sedona. Usually, but not always. But we are there for the energy vortexes. They help us to recharge. And it is a safe place for us. And there are other ships that like this area as well. But yes, we are outside the atmosphere. Quite a ways outside, but not gr a great ways. We are between places, if you will. Very interesting. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, we have a question next from Jess444. She said, what entities are within my chakra at this time trying to lower my energy? And can I please receive help in releasing them to remove my, to improve my health and clear my chakras? Thank you, Bashar, and much love. At this time, let me see your chakras. Who is this? That is saying that. Jess444. Four, four, four. Ah, yes, I know who that is. Right now, part of that feeling, yes, there is an entity in your, there is only one. But the other part is the fourth dimensional energy that is affecting all of the earth, making fatigue and different things. Many of you will have been feeling fatigue since the seventh and eighth or ninth of this month. But that will soon clear up. However, yes, you do have an entity within your oral field. One moment, please. There will be a moment that you will feel a jolt, not a strong one, but he will be removed. Does not matter what his name is, he was just an energy vampire of a small nature. Poof, ah, <laughs> poof, let him go. Thank you, Bashar. <laughs> I'm sure she's very thankful for that. Wonderful. Um, poof. He can go now, but he's released. Oh, that's so good to hear. Okay, great. Um, we have a question next from Barbara in the YouTube chat. Yes, Barbara. 
Hi, Bashar. I'm reading the question for Barbara. Um, she said, I would like to hear more about the economic financial collapse that we're supposed to have in about a year's time here in the U.S. What's going to happen after the initial uproar? What's going to replace the monetary system? And how will we get food? What about housing? How are we going to get the things that we need to live if we don't buy them anymore? Should I spend my inheritance now? and have fun before there's no more money? That's your question. I would have to write volumes to answer that. <laughs> but let me tell you this. This is what is important that you understand. There is nothing that you can do about the economic collapse. You can sell, you can buy, no matter what you do. It will not affect... It, it will be what it is, and it is not completely sure i am not completely sure what it will be because many people need to make decisions before we will know exactly what that future looks like do you understand i cannot tell you what's going to be the outcome from the other side because i'm not on the other side i can select a now from the past present and future but that now can change why can it change is because there are many things happening to involve change, to bring about change, to present itself in a different way at all different times. Those that are outside your planet are also thinking about how to help you without being too interfering, without breaking the prime directive, so to speak. They are trying to help without helping too much. But I cannot speak about wh what it will be because we don't know exactly what that will be yet. It is still, it is close by, but soon is a relative word. It can be soon a day or soon 10 years, but it will not be that far. But what I do know is this. Great changes will come. Great understanding will come. And do not worry about how to buy food. My greatest concern is that people get their medical supplies during this period of time. Enough food. That will be the greatest, the food and the water and the medication. Those are the things that are necessary, but that may not even be a great concern if it moves out farther. The farther away that the collapse is, the, the less powerful it will be. That is all I can say for now. Okay. Interesting. Thank you, Bashar. Um, okay, next we have a question pr from Pavel. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, thank you. Great. I have a question. If uh, Are you uh, familiar with the entity called um, Atlant uh, Suran, the Atlantean? He is channeled yes. the Mount Genizel. Um I, I Continue. Yes. Um, can you, uh, from your point of view, can you uh, uh, tell me the difference between his uh, philosophy and yours, and what you view on his way of doing things? Ah, um, our our views. Well, that is a very long answer, but let me make it short by saying this. We are different personalities, and we think, see things from a different point of view. We see different aspects of the truth. Now, you say as you look back into the history, there is only one truth. This is true, but when others look at it, they perceive it differently. And so whenever truth is in question, you must go back in a time machine and look at it exactly as it is. Now, 
I have not done all that with all of Atlantis. I do not have the time for that. I must move forward in my uh, movements and helping with all the things that I can help with on this particular planet and on my own planet. So his perception of the truth about that time and my perception of the truth from that time may slightly differ, but uh, that is all. Sir, right. Sorry. We do sorry. have great it's ideas perfect. of what happened. What is or what is what? I'm sorry, the question wasn't about Atlantis. The question was about Suran, um, entity named Suran, and his philosophy. Yes. Now he's channeled now in Israel about, uh, um, <clears throat> he's talking about doing things like you say, but you're talking more uh, from the um, uh, mentally, mental type um, <clears throat> thinking, and he's talking more about emotions. Yes. And, do. That doesn't mean that we're. That doesn't mean that we can't come to the same conclusion. Why? Because the mind, body, soul, and spirits are all, all connected. Do you understand this? If he talks about the emotions, that it will. He perceives it from a, that point of view. My point of view is more intellectual, but it does perceive the emotion, the spirit at the body and all these things that does not mean that we are that different we just are looking at things at a different perception and a different point of view okay thank does that you. Make sense to you yes sure sure and <clears throat> one um, okay never mind thank you very much but the thing is let me continue with that just one moment is that I take some of the emotions out of it because I find them to be distracting. Where he puts the emotions into it to make you grasp it in a different way. Does that help even more? Yes, yes. But he's really um, talking about um, about a, a work that you have to do, like if you... <clears throat> You're talking yeah. about more about changing the way, changing the world by changing your perspective. And he's saying that you have to work, 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 work on that. And after you done working and it's nothing, you don't have emotional attachments, it's going to change anyway. It's, I don't agree with him completely because I see things in a different way from a different perspective. But I see why he feels that way and because... He is coming from a place where work, work, work was the answer. I'm coming from a place where work is not the answer because I do not believe that you have to work as hard as he thinks you do. Okay, thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Thank you. We have another question from Krelik. Yes, hello, Shar, again. Uh, I remember you saying earlier in one of your sessions with Daryl Anka about how Earth humans make good TV. Um, are you able to elaborate on what you meant by that? Earth humans make good TV, is that what I said? Yes, about how sometimes some aliens tend to watch humans. Yes. You do make good TV. It is very entertaining. It has interesting psychological effects on the people. Now, I don't mean that it is always good, but there is some positivity that comes through with the negativity. You seem to be very caught up in and interested in how negativity affects your population. Now, I find that to be very interesting because sometimes it can be positively effective and other times it can be negatively effective depending on the point of view of the person watching. So therefore, I find your television very interesting. Thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> next, we have a question from Sarah. 
Sarah. Hello, Bashar. Hello. Uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, I have a question. Pleasure. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I have a question. Um, while you've been channeling, I've been feeling some sort of bubbling energy in my brain, and I was wondering if you knew what that was. Yes, some of it is that fourth dimensional energy, but um, other than that, you have a great connection, a very, a very strong connection with the Hathors, and they are actually doing some work with you at this time. They would like to straighten out some of your emotional ties. You continue to let the emotion affect you in a greater way than it should at times. And there are people in your lives that can really pull on your emotional strings. And for you to be as successful as they want you to be and as successful as you should be, emotions not necessarily have to go away or lessen, but they have to be put in proper perspective. And this is the information and this is the work they are doing with your brain. Okay, but there's something connected to your species at the moment, it seems, because this is brand new, and every time I connect to your energy, I get this bubbling sensation going on. I'm, I'm very grateful. Yes, bubbling sensation would be a good thing, yes. But... Do you know what that is? Uh, it is because... Well, we are connected. Uh, it, it, it is that... Your nows and our nows are, and we can figure that out together. Or we can just know that there is a connection through time space. Or we can know that you have had a past life with our species. And there are many different things that it could be. But a connection with us is always a positive thing. Uh -huh. All right, very well, thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry I did not answer that the way that you would have liked to. However, I cannot really exactly what that is because it has a perspective that is very personal only to you, and I cannot read it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Bashar. Uh, we have a question next from Khan. He is asking... How would our work be able to help with first contact? What would be the best way for us to um, help in terms of maybe either drawing or making movies or any sort of art or science or anything? You are helping quite a bit, Con, because your art is being seen by many people and enjoyed, but it is also giving a perspective of non-human existence. You understand this, that you are showing what other species look like. You are showing that other species have a sense of humor. You are showing that other species are developing and working with us in some way. Therefore, your work is being noted but you're saying, but it's only noted above by the people that are already aware of aliens and already aware of outside influences. Not quite true. There are those that will look at your art because they are art lovers and love the perspective of what you are doing. And therefore, what you are doing is helping others to be interested in the future of their planet. Yes, that is wonderful. Um, great. I, would you have any recommendations for others that, um, you know, maybe aren't so artsy? In general, for the human race, what else can we do other than what we've that we know so far, those of us in these communities. What else we can we do to help? The biggest thing, humans can do who are enlightened, and listen carefully because that is the key, 
you are have to be good listeners. You must listen to what others are saying and respond to what their belief system holds. Because you cannot spurt out about aliens and about the future and about things that is not within their belief system or within their personage. So you must listen to who they are and be enlightening in a way that makes them interested in further knowledge. Eventually, when they are interested in further knowledge, when they realize that there is truth in the things you say that they may not be aware of because of their belief systems and who they are, they will begin to research in their brain thought process that brings what you are saying into them. But if you were to challenge their belief systems and not listen and just react, you would lose them completely. That you is also an example of a good human being not being someone that would be disrespectful, not being someone that would be far out, but someone they can relate to. Because if they cannot relate to you, you will not be spoken to by them. And you will not have the opportunity to get this information to them in a very practical way. Absolutely. That is a wonderful answer and very helpful for us, I think. So thank you, Bashar. Um, do you have yeah. time to take a few more questions? We do have a few more. Uh, you know, I do not have much time. Daryl okay. has things that I need to go and do with him. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Well, hey, say hi to Daryl for us and we appreciate you stopping by today. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful Oh. Thank you, Bashar. We love you. Good day.